So PRP, platelet-rich plasma. Uh, I've had a lot of questions in the comments, and this is a question that many patients ask me on a daily basis in the office. So I thought I'd cover some information about PRP today. Hi, welcome back, Adam Rosen. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, uh, please click the subscribe button so you get updated when videos like this come out. And please click the thumbs up and like button so people like you that are looking for information like this can find it. So today um, I want to talk briefly about PRP or platelet-rich plasma because the whole field of regenerative medicine or orthobiologics is changing rapidly. So what might be true today may be very different um, in six or 12 months. But patients ask about PRP almost daily. So PRP is platelet-rich plasma. So there are platelets in our blood. And the definition of platelet-rich plasma or PRP is plasma with a platelet concentration that is higher than the concentration found in whole blood. And this happens by us drawing a sample of blood from you putting it into a centrifuge, which spins it down. And this way we can extract out this highly concentrated platelets within the serum. And when that PRP is injected back into the body, it can cause an immunologic response, an inflammatory response, and this all aids in healing of tissue. Now, the majority of studies, especially early on, that found that PRP was helpful in healing tissue was tissue that basically had the potential for healing. And it was first used, and there's a lot of studies on lateral epicondylitis, better known as tennis elbow. And a lot of patients had successful treatments with PRP injections. There's also been studies that have shown success in treating rotator cuff tears, um, what's called the rotator cuff tear of the hip, which is the gluteus medius and minimus tendon, um, even things like uh, uh, the Achilles tendon and plantar fasciitis. And how does this happen? So platelets, when they're activated, release a number of growth factors. So platelet-derived growth factor, transforming growth factor, uh, insulin-like growth factor, fibroblastic growth factor, uh, vascular endothelial growth factor. So all of these growth factors aid in tissue healing. And the question really comes up as to whether or not it can heal arthritis. You know, does it have the potential to heal cartilage? Um, and that is the jury is still out. Most of the osteoarthritis data, so when we're talking about PRP for arthritis, so like injecting it into your arthritic knee, um, has been mixed. There are studies that do show that PRP results in better pain relief than either cortisone or HA, which is hyaluronic acid or visco supplements, the gel injection. There are other studies that looked at using PRP mixed with hyaluronic acid, and some studies showed that it helped and some studies showed that it didn't. Um, one of the biggest trials is what's called the RESTORE trial, and they compared PRP injections to a saline placebo injection, and they found that at one year there was no significant difference in symptoms and there was no difference in joint structure. So that's the important thing that there's a misperception that this will make your x-ray look normal by increasing the space or regrow cartilage on the end of your thigh bone or shin bone or dissolve bone spurs. And no study has shown that that has occurred. Um, but when you're talking about PRP, it's complicated because PRP is not just PRP. There are multiple kinds of PRP. And the most common differentiating PRP types are what's called um, leukocyte rich and leukocyte poor. So these leukocytes, these types of blood cells, can decrease the effect of PRP by causing cell damage and tissue damage. So many preparations of PRP are what's called leukocyte poor. But you can also add additives, so things like calcium chloride and thrombin, to attempt to activate the platelets, because it is when the platelets are activated that they release all those growth factors that can help aid in decreasing pain or cause a healing response. Now, most studies for osteoarthritis have looked at patients that were younger and patients that had what we would describe as more mild or moderate arthritis. There still needs to be more studies looking at older individuals and patients that have severe arthritis. So 
there's a couple um, committees out there. Um, one is the American Medical Society for Sports Medicine. And they actually recently, a couple of years ago, came out with their position statement. And I thought there was an important um, quote that they mentioned that I wanted to reference here. And this was from the FDA in 2018. And they stated that, quote, the potential health benefits of regenerative medicine have spurred major progress in stem cell biology over the past several decades. But we continue to see bad actors explore, exploit the scientific promise of this field to mislead vulnerable patients. And this is where it gets complicated because regenerative medicine not only includes PRP, but stem cells, amniotic fluid, and lots of other types of injections. And it's a huge field because many times, if you're spending $1,000, because this is not covered by insurance, that injection that takes a few minutes for $1,000 cash is the exact same amount of money a surgeon gets paid to perform a knee replacement and to care for you for three months. So money can be a major driving factor. The conclusion of that mission statement that I'll read to you here is, quote, despite these novel therapies being very attractive to sports medicine physicians and patients alike, this is a complex and controversial topic. Uh, and this fits in with the AAOS statement, which also came out in 2021. So the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons comes up with committees to look at everything that you can think of in orthopedics, from surgical to non-surgical treatments for every body part in the body. And these statements came from that statement. So PRP for the treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee demonstrates statistical significant improvements in some patient reported outcomes compared to placebo. They also stated that when compared to other treatments, the results of PRP varied. They further go on to say that studies have limitations, that few studies look at the function or structure or inconsistent reporting of leukocyte and platelet concentration. So what I was talking to you about before is there's not just one PRP, there's many, many types of PRP. And we need to know what concentration or combination or type of PRP leads to the best results based on the diagnosis. They go on to conclude at the end of their statement that future high quality studies are needed to identify the efficacy of PRP, the best formulation of PRP, and the dosing of PRP. So I hope that that just makes you a more informed patient. So if you have pain and arthritis and are looking for treatment options, you know, I highly recommend if you've failed conservative care treatment like anti-inflammatories, rest therapy for things like lateral epicondylitis, tennis elbow, gluteal tendinopathy, rotator cuff tendinopathy. There are enough studies that show that PRP can be extremely helpful for those problems and may induce a healing response. When it comes to PRP for the knee, again, we're not exactly sure what the best formulation of PRP is, what the dosing should be as far as amount and the number of doses that patients get and also whether or not it is more useful in young patients versus old patients, or more helpful in mild versus moderate versus severe arthritis. So at this point in time, what I recommend to my patients are all of the normal things that you've heard me tell over and over again before, is that if you're overweight, lose weight. If you're weight weak, get stronger. If you haven't tried simple over-the-counter medications, such as acetaminophen or one of the NSAIDs, try those. You may consider cortisone injections, one of the newer injections that's being used more and more frequently now is called Tordol, which is an anti-inflammatory, which then can be injected into the knee. And for patients that can afford it and are interested in other non-surgical treatments, at this point, PRP looks like it can be a promising option, but for many people still, the cost is prohibitive. Um, so this hopefully not only answers your questions, but makes you a more informed patient. So if you're looking to pursue PRP injections, you might take some of this information and present to your doctor with questions on which concentration they use, what dosing they use, do they use a leukocyte poor PRP injection, and what the results of, of their patients might be when it comes to young versus old and mild versus moderate versus severe arthritis. So until next time, thanks again for watching. I'm Adam Rosen. Stay safe.